Hello, my name is Curtis Dykstra, Parks Naturalist with Ottawa County Parks. This year's 2022 Coffee with the Birds Mug Club Photo Contest had 95 entries. Unfortunately, we could only choose five winners and only one grand prize winner to go on our 2023 Mug Club member mug. To highlight the amazing winning photos, we've interviewed all five winners. Mike Burgeon, Chris Sprick, Lonnie Garris, Carl Manning, and June Kuiper. We asked them to give us a glimpse into the story behind their amazing photos. We'll start with the grand prize winner, Mike Burgeon. Enjoy. My name is Michael Burgeon. I took a picture of a cedar waxwing. Um, I primarily do my birding, well, I live in Jenison, Michigan, so Grand River Park and the ravines. And on this particular day, I went to the ravines, uh, down the hill, um, along the Hellstrom natural area to the very end. This was in December, um, before all the construction down there started. And typically I like to go to the end first and then work my way back slowly so that the sun that time of day in December is behind me, um, lights up the birds well. So I'm working my way slowly back down the trail and um, suddenly a small flock of mixed birds that had cedar wax wings, um, house finches and goldfinches all sort of intermingled together, came down and landed on a bush that's just to the right of the footpath that had red berries on it and still had some green leaves on it. And I was really initially excited about trying to take a picture of the uh, house finches because they get their red color from the, the berries they eat. So if they live in an area where there's yellow berries, they would be yellow instead of red. And I, I did get a couple of really nice pictures. It was sunny and nice glint in their eyes. And just as a cloud moved over the sun, so it lost the dramatic lighting, then a couple of the um, wax wings flew across the path to the other side and landed on this little bush that had purple berries hanging on it. Um, and so I took a burst of them because one of them was clearly feeding. Um, so it probably got about 10 shots and one of them turned out to be the one that I uh, kept because it was right in the middle of tossing the berry, just getting ready to swallow it. Um, I didn't really think about it yet as being um, a winning picture because I figured I had a lot of time left for the whole year to try and get something better, but, but I knew I had a good picture. I'm Carl Manning, and I entered a picture of a mean girl speak. Uh, it was taken, taken um, from our garage door. Uh, there was a clock of about 40 or so birds coming to the feeders, and once in a while, one would land on, on a, a corn apple branch. So this, this has got possibility. So I waited until we got a male to come in and uh, got a few pictures. And this is on the last day of the, the uh, entry period, 31st of October. Um, and I shot him with a, a Canon R5 with a 100 to, 400 to 500 lens. Um, it was a bit noisy because it was fairly low light, even though it was about noon. And uh, the birds just kept coming in, and I, I got a few shots, and one worked out. Uh, we really hadn't had a flock like this since, I think, probably the 80s. Uh, when we first moved in, um, they were coming in, and uh, we were buying groceries, well, buying sunflowers <laughs> once a week. We started calling them grocery beaks. I love it. They, they go through a seed like crazy, but they're really neat to have. And they came in um, two days later, they pretty much are gone. They had a couple come in a little later after that, but that was it. My name is Chris Sprick, and the bird that I photographed was the common red pole. Uh, my common red pole was a part of a large invasion of red poles. I bet I had a hundred or more in my backyard. They, you know, one found my thistle feeder and then he told others and then they kept coming and kept coming and um, 
yeah, there was they were fighting over the thistle seed. I ended up having to get another thistle feeder, and that still wasn't enough. Um, so he was just one of the many um, waiting to get on the feeder, and I have a wisteria that is right behind my um, my feeder there, and he landed on a little branch and was able to capture him all fluffed up in, in his wonderful feathers and um, the way it ended up, the background was uh, quite a distance away, so it had that nice blurry background. You never know what you're gonna get when you um, um, take a picture, so I you know, took lots, <laughs> and it took lots of the multiple um, the bunches of them, I guess I should say. Um, and uh, once you look at your pictures and think, oh, that's cool, this is a good one, and that would maybe be a good one for the, the coffee with the birds mug. So I've been part of coffee with the birds for a few years. Um, so I always keep that in the back of my mind, I guess, when I'm when I'm shooting, and uh, I was only hoping that I had a nice, crisp, clear shot. <laughs> My name is Lonnie Garris. I'm from Zeeland, Michigan, and I took the photo of the Carolina Wren. I'd like to tell you the story of my encounter with the Carolina Wren. It was March of this year, and I'd heard reports of a great horned owl at Maplewood Park, and I thought, I'd visit a park that I'd never been to before and maybe see a great horned owl. I never did see the great horned owl, but I did find a really, really gregarious and vocal Carolina wren. It may have been nesting in the area and it kept coming back and forth to this really great little perch that you can see the photo on. And I spent about 15 or 20 minutes just watching and listening to the Carolina wren move around and vocalize and one of those photos turned out to be one that you're seeing right now. One tip that I'd like to share with you um, when I was capturing the photos of the uh, Carolina Wren was once the bird knew where I was, I stayed where I was and then slowly moved my lens up and just stayed there. I actually didn't take a photo for half a minute or so. I just stayed and let the Wren get used to the camera lens being in its field of view. And doing that, the bird got comfortable with me and seemed to be okay with me then starting to take lots and lots of photos of it. So I'm June Piper and I took the photo of the Northern Cardinal. This was February when I took this picture. And so to get a good crisp picture, you have to open the windows to your home. <laughs> and so it's very cold and it's February and I'm in the bedroom at this point. But there was a, some activity going on back there and this cardinal landed right on a perch. And I, you know, we get lots of cardinals, but sometimes they're like molting or they have different colors on them. But this one was just like pristine and perfect. And he wanted to perform. He wanted to pose and then he, his crest was lifted up too. And I'm like, this has got to be the most beautiful cardinal I've ever seen. So I got multiple pictures of the cardinal. Um, this one was the best because of how its position was and this crest was up and what have you. And, and so I thought, oh, this is really nice. And the sun was out and the sky, I could see the sky. So it was just, just pretty. Um, when I went through selecting all the different pictures to enter for the mug club, I had other ones and I almost didn't put the cardinal in there because I thought, oh, that's really ordinary. You know, I had a, uh, I think it was a purple sandpiper too in there. And it's like, that's kind of rare. So I thought maybe that one would, would be good. Um, but this one just kept, I just come coming back to it because it was so pretty. And um, so I said, all right, you know what? I'm just going to put this one in there. And then lo and behold, it's like, okay, it gets selected for one of the, the runners up. And I said, oh, that's really cool. I mean, just to have a, a, a photo in there, I really appreciate, you know, being selected. It's exciting. And so thank you to the Hemlock Crossings group and Curtis and the whole team here. 
Um, it was, it's, it's just so fun to be part of, and I think the work that you do is so amazing because it's bringing awareness to people about how important um, birds and, and nature and, and preserving all this and, and conserving what we have is. So, you know, that, that's my story. I hope you've enjoyed the stories behind each of the winning photos. If you'd like to purchase your 2023 Mug Club membership featuring Mike Burgeon's Cedar Waxwing photo, you can do so for $25 online at miottawa.org slash birding or at the Nature Center located at Hemlock Crossing County Park. This year, check out our first ever Mug Club Photo Contest 2023 calendar featuring the winners plus 10 additional fantastic photos selected from the contest. And if you entered the contest, you're on the front cover. I also invite you to join us this winter for a Coffee with the Birds event at the Nature Center or live stream directly to your home. For more information on Coffee with the Birds, the photo contest, and all things birding in Ottawa County, you can visit the website at miottawa.org slash birding. And remember, it's not too early to start taking photos for the 2023 photo contest. Photos are accepted between November 1st, 2022 and October 31st, 2023. Good luck.